Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my review of Crucial Technologies Real SSD Solid State Drive. This is their latest C300 model. It offers up SATA, so serial ATA connection and up to 6 gigabits per second on the data transfer rate. Now it's a 2.5 inch form factor and today I'm going to be installing it into the PC build that I recently performed on the channel. Now let's have a look inside the packaging, see what you get. You obviously get some information, instructions and the limited three year warranty info. And then you get the drive itself. Now this is a two and a half inch form factor drive. Here is the drive, very, very compact. Got some information on this side. We've got the serial ATA data and power connections on this side here and there's the front sticker with the branding very very compact drive the idea behind solid state drives is there are no moving parts superbly fast performance so what I'm going to be showing you is I'm going to be actually performing a benchmark or Windows Experience Index and showing you that on the screen prior to the installation then showing you the install and what difference it's made on performance now what you don't get inside the packaging you need to get separately you need obviously a serial ATA connector so this is the little cable to connect the drive to the PC and you will also need some sort of adapter this is a three and a half inch to two and a half inch adapter plate they're only two or three pounds online and you need this to convert the two and a half inch SSD drive to fit a standard three and a half inch bay so let's show you the Windows Experience Index uh, score prior to the installation and then get on with the install. So what you can see on your screen at the moment is my current Windows Experience Index and this is my system performance prior to the crucial solid state drive being installed. As you can see my disk data transfer rate is currently 5.9 out of a possible 7.9 and this is with two Samsung Serial ATA drives installed in a RAID configuration. So now I'm going to do a restart on the system. I'm going to time the restart from when the first post BIOS screen actually appears. So there from when the first window screen appeared, we have a time of 52.1 seconds. So before we get the PC onto the workbench, we're going to actually mount the drive onto this adapter plate. And this is uh, changing the size of this 2.5 inch drive so it will fit into a 3.5 inch bay in the PC. And you do this really easily. I'm going to remove a couple of these screws. So let's take these centre ones out. And going to just put the drive on the mounting plate before we get the PC into my work area. So once these screws are out we will mount the drive onto this adapter plate. So we're going to pop this on here like so and then we're going to turn the adapter plate over 
and as you can see we just need to line up the screws on the bottom of the drive so we do it about there and then we pop the screws back in So just to give you a closer look at that, that's the drive mounted onto the adapter plate. Now we we'll get the PC onto the work area and install this into the PC. So I'm going to try and give you as good a view as I can of the inside of the case for the installation. Now I've already got two 3.5 inch serial ATA drives in these two bays here. I'm going to put the SSD into this one um, for ease of access really. Before I do that, I'm going to actually disconnect these two drives from the motherboard. Now you don't have to do this, you can swap drive letters around afterwards, but I found that this just helps with the um, uh, sort of installation of windows. So I'm going to reach down here, this is the serial ATA connections, and just remove those two. These are the two hard drives from the motherboard. Now you don't have to do that, but that's just my personal preference for doing an installation. So let's get this drive into this top bay. Now these quick release bays in my case might differ slightly from yours. They do come with these little white pieces in here which go into the mounting screws on the drives. But in this particular install I'm going to take these out because they don't line up very well on the solid state drive mounting plate. So it's just a matter of easing those off and taking them out. And then I'm going to offer up the solid state drive to this quick release bay. And if I take you a look at side view here, I can just line up those screw holes on the side and just pop the first screw in. So that's the first screw in. And then the same around the other side. Pop another screw in there. And then I can also get some screws in the front of this plate as well. So let's just pop one in there. I'm not going to do this front one up too tightly. I don't want to snap these quick release mounts. It's just purely just to hold the drive in place. And then the same around this side. Just an additional screw in there. There we go. Now, before I put this back in, to the uh, receptor here, I'm going to actually attach the serial ATA cable and this is just for the data only so that's clicked onto the back of the drive and I just need to get some power to it as well so let's have a look where I can borrow some power from for ease of this install I'm going to take this bay out and pop it in the top and then I'm going to 
use this power for the solid state drive. So I'm going to pop that onto the uh, back of the drive. Like so, so that's power to the drive as well. data cable down to the bottom here grab that serial ATA cable and then we lower the solid state drive into this bay and just pop that spare one back in to the bottom there you go, I've changed my mind three times there as to what bay I was going to install it in now this is the data connector, I've got to get this onto this, this colour coded white and there is an additional two white serial ATA connections here so I'm going to pop that into one of those connectors then we'll be ready to install windows There we go, so that's in place on the motherboard. I'm going to leave the side off of the case at this stage uh, purely because once it's installed I'm going to reintroduce those other two drives to it. But let's get this fired up, I'm going to get Windows installed and then I'm going to show you how the performance has been affected uh, and hopefully improved by installing the solid state drive. So now the crucial solid state drive is installed in the system I've reinstalled Windows 7 64-bit and all the motherboard drivers and also the graphics drivers and I've rerun the Windows Experience Index and you can see here the disk transfer rate has improved dramatically it's gone up to a massive 7.7 .7 out of a possible 7.9 so as before I'm going to do a restart on the system and see if the actual restart time has improved as well And again, a, just amazing improvements in the startup time. We're down to 31.7 seconds. Now, this is not, by no means a very accurate recording of the time to restart, but certainly a big, big improvement on the previous restart time. So that concludes my installation of the Crucial Technology 256GB real SSD drive into the system. It's certainly a rock-solid performer, fantastic performance on that restart time and it's going to improve the system performance a great great deal it's available in all different capacities 64 gigabytes right up to the 256 gigabyte model thank you very much for listening please do keep checking back on the Geek and Noise channel for more video reviews and if you want to get my regular updates then please follow me on Twitter by following at Geekanoids. This video review is sponsored by Crucial, the memory experts they provide reliable PC, notebook and Mac memory to boost your system performance and improve your general workflow.